Time to get our next speaker. I'm very excited about this one. Superstar. We have a superstar. Everyone else, nah, this is the superstar. You can't have a favourite. Our next speaker is a freelance art director and designer from Portugal, currently based in London. Her work is focused mainly on style frames and look development for motion, but she also produces illustrations for print. She loves travelling, drinking hot chocolate and pretending how to play guitar. And as a surprise bonus, she's also dragged her husband, Martin Gunnison, along to speak with her. Time now to welcome Nidia Diaz. Right, so hi, everyone. Um, so it was interesting to hear the talks this morning as well about collaboration, and that's kind of what I'm going to be talking today. So these are the projects I'm going to talk about. And... Um, I try really hard to get three of the projects to be Australian based. Could only get two, but I think it's a good ratio. Um, so for those who don't know me, a little quick intro. So hi, I'm Nidhi Diaz. This is my husband, Martin Gunnarsson. And I'm gonna talk a bit about me and also explain why he's here today. <laughs> I'm sure you're all surprised. Um, so yeah, I was born and raised in tiny, lovely Portugal. Um, I have a background in graphic design. That's actually the university course that I took and a deep love for motion. And besides Portugal, I've lived in Sweden, UK and Canada by that order. Uh, and I'm actually in Portugal now, um, back this year. So that's great. But what do I really do, right? So it's a bunch of titles. Um, I do love making stills pretty much. Um, that's pretty much it. Just I just put a bunch of titles and that's it. Uh, and I've worked over nine years in the industry. so. For those who don't know me, I'm just going to show a bit of my reel. And um, the music was done by him, but that's not the reason why he's here. <laughs> I'll figure it out later. Thank you very much. So I'd like to start with a project that I did last year or I collaborated last year called Me Prominent. And the type of collaboration I'd like to talk about is across the globe. Um, I was approached last year by Joyce um, to help her in a project for the Me Prominent titles. Um, and this was really interesting because first we're all scattered around the world. And the idea was in this project that each one of us had a section, but each section flowed from one to the other. Um, so we had to be mindful of what we were kind of the beginning and ending of our, our sections. Um, here's a little graph map of where we're all standing. And at the time I was living in Toronto, I was actually having a full-time job there. Um, so most of this project was actually done weekends and nights. Um, and as you can see, I'm written as animation. And as I said before, I prefer doing stills. So what was this project about? So um, no, better, no one better than the director to say it, so I just copied this from our website. <laughs> Uh, inspired by Ernest Eccles' work, the titles delve into the microscopic world and bring to life the real beauty of this unseen world. So when Joyce approached me, she already had an animatic, some style frames, and, and a mood board to show me. And I really like the, the works of, of Ernest, like this one. Um, so I was really inspired, and I really wanted to, um, I, I really wanted to help on the project. So I definitely said, yes, sign me up. Um, so because this is a, a long piece and uh, we're short on time, I'm just going to start by showing the behind the scenes of what I've, the parts that I've worked on, and then I'll talk a bit better about them, each other. So here it is.
So, as I said before, I. I really love doing stills and look deaf. Um, and when I was approached to this project, I was it was pretty much doing the whole part of my section, uh, from designing to animating and comping and everything. So I usually start with the creative side first and ideas, but for this project, I actually flip it the other way around, and I had to start first with the technical side because I'm not that technical, um, and I I knew that I've if I wanted to create something like a a shape that was quite in, like crazy and, and sculpted a lot, I'd have to do a rig, which I don't do. So I had to kind of create simplified ways in Cine 4D to kind of animate it in a simple way. So this is pretty much just most splines and spline wraps. And, and once I was happy with how he was looking and the, the movement of it, just a bit for my own sake, I started doing a bit of like to look dev and, and kind of figuring out how I wanted the things to look look and how the shading and all the stuff. And also as well to send to the director to see his, if this was on the right track. Um, so I'm going to show the final video because um, it, it's beautiful and it's every one of us had like their own different styles and everything got together really well. And then I'm going to explain a bit about this idea of having to start first with the technical and then the design afterwards. So please enjoy. So now comes the reason why my husband is here. Um, constraints. So, <laughs> not from him. <laughs> um, so this project, like I said, I had to do the technical side first, and only then I had to actually figure out like of the the look and design, um, which means that I actually had end up doing a simple animation. Um, I'm, I'm very proud of what I've done, but I know as well that I could accomplish m much more if I would just dedicate to what I love doing. So this is not to say all to say that you can do anything, but not everything. So it's good to know your boundaries and know what you're capable of and what you actually love doing. Uh, and it's OK as well to ask for help. Um, I realized that as I was in that project that I could have done much better if I would just delegate more what I want to do and then cr have help of something that I'm not that great at. So with that in mind, when I got approached for last year for another project, I learned from my mistakes. And that time, I asked my husband to help. So this type of collaboration that I want to talk about is collaboration with a partner or a friend or as you, you wish. So and here I was just mainly focusing on design and look deaf. And I help I asked him to pretty much do the, all the hard tasks of the animation and simulation. Um, so yeah, so last year I got approached by an agency in Brazil. Um, and what was the brief? So they had this uh, client, which was a Brazilian brand, that does, uh, they have like branding clothing, they do shoes. And this uh, agency called Artcore, their pretty much their idea was to invite 12 artists to um, pretty much do one video each. So the idea was each video be uh, per month on Instagram. And their idea was pretty much it had to be loopable. They gave us each one a, a shoe. Uh, to be, which will be the center of attention. And then for the, the idea that they got was each artist will get a keyword based on something that they want to showcase on the, um, 
the project. So the keyword that they gave me was comfort. Now, usually what I start doing is trying to get a, a, an idea and how I gonna, and try to kind of pitch back the ideas or one or two to the client and see what they liked. Now, not always is, is easy to like get a, an idea out of the batch. And at the time when they say the keyword is comfort, I had totally no idea what I was gonna do. And, and I didn't want it to visualize it in a very technical way where the part of the comfort comes from the shoe. So I was actually having a hard time thinking, what am I going to do? And we were in a trip in Montreal because we we're living in Canada last time, last year. And I saw some kids playing in a bouncy castle. And I was like, that's fun. Um, is it comfortable? Probably. Uh, so this was a mood board that I sent to the client. And the idea was that I wanted the first, I didn't want the shoe to actually become inflatable because you're selling a product. I don't know if the client would like that I would make it inflatable. But then I realized, oh, maybe I can have the environment get inflatable. And that was actually one of the requirements from the agency or the client. Like they didn't want to have this kind of studio background. So this was a bit of the mood board that I sent to the, the client. And it was mainly like getting this. I was just trying to show this, the colors that I was thinking of and the aesthetics. Like I really like the, the stairs and the arcs and the columns. So I really wanted to apply that in the environment that I was doing. And a lot of the stuff that I do is very abstract. So for me, it was also a good challenge to try creating a, an environment, which is something that I don't normally do. So how do I usually get started? So first off, in this project, they did send me a... A 3D model, a 3D scan of the shoe, uh, and I, I just put in the materials because there was no pictures of how the shoe looked. So first thing was getting that out of the way and asking the client, is this how your shoe looks? Good, next. Um, and then after that was really trying to figure out what was the environment going to be. Now, I, I also wanted to explore the lighting, like shadows, um, and how everything was combining together. And I did send this to the client for them to approve. Um, and, I, and I realized it was very close to the mood board and also it wasn't. It looked a lot like a dollhouse because the problem here was having the shoe feel like it was not a big piece in your living room, but just like an actual normal size shoe. So the client did approve this environment, but I hated it after sending it. So I scrapped that and I made a new environment. Um, and so this was the, the final environment and it felt much more open uh, much more light. I could play much more with the lighting and like sky in the background. But at the same time, it kind of felt it was closer to a bouncy castle in the sense that you you do have when you see the pictures like those kind of free walls and all the stuff. And and also there was much more elements that could be used to create this environment of uh, inf inflatable castle. So as I was doing this, it wasn't like a linear process that I just passed into him. So we were working both at the same time, and. I was exploring the environment, but I was also at the same time trying to figure out how the balloon thing would, would, would be. So he was doing some tests on and simulations, and he would pass it to me, for example, this one. And then I, and, and in Dennis Cinefort, I was just like really trying to get the material to look like as I wanted. So as I was working on this, Martin was doing the hard work. Not sure if it was all the hard work. I think you pretty much kind of nailed that. Um, thank you guys for being here today. I'm Martin. and. Thank you, James, for inviting us and for Nidia for letting me be part of our presentation. Normally, I'm sitting there in the sidelines. So today, we're going to focus a little bit about the animation side of this. So Nidia came to me, and she's like, OK, I have this project with some a lot of simulations going on. Is this something that you will be able to help me with? And I said, sure, yes. I pr probably didn't have my choice, but so go for it. Uh, so my go-to tool for this was NCOF in Maya. Um, and it just gives you a lot of nice shapes out of the box. You don't need to play too much with it before you start getting something that looks interesting, right? Um, and also because at this early point of the production, like Nidia said, we still kind of changed the environment around a lot. So we needed something that could adapt to whatever objects we were throwing at it. So all of the creases and like nice details you see here is all done in the simulation pass. So that was handy to kind of save ourselves some time. So when we had that established, we know that the shoe would kind of go down, touch the floor, and create this kind of ripple effect for the, for the simulation to start. So we set up in two layers. One was the main ripple that kind of triggered the underlying um, effect of the, the cloth kind of being underneath it. Uh, one other aspect here that was pretty handy was that I was also in charge of the animation of the shoe. So these two elements together needed to kind of work when it kind of bounces on the floor, right? So having this go from a hard surface up to this kind of balloonified one, it it was kind of tricky to get it right. So not make it too floaty or just make it 
uh, not too violent as well, right? So we had the effect done. Now we're just trying to find out a way to get this onto all of the other stuff in the environment and trying to not blow things up in the process as well. Uh, things like the staircase, like you want to be able to preserve the original shape of it, but also make it interesting in a way when it's kind of blown up. Uh, so that was, that was pretty fun. So here is a final kind of piece, just showing all of the different elements together, right? And you can see, like Nita said before, it needed to loop and go back together. So I think we had like five seconds or something for the final piece. So it's not too much time to go up to this state and then back down again. It's all for Instagram, right? So you need to be able to loop. And so without too much further notice, I'm going to show the final video. And when we delivered this, we didn't actually add any sound on it. But looking over it over and over again, we realized that something was missing, right? So we added sound into this one. Hope you enjoy. So yeah, he does all the heavy duty and I just get the credits um, and I do all the talking. Um, <laughs> joke aside, um, no, it's been great working on this. And then early this year, uh, or this year, one of our last projects that we actually worked together was for the Australian Chamber Orchestra. And this was a really fun project. Uh, we got approached by Scott, which I think is somewhere here. And please, hey. yes. Um, so yeah, so when Scott approached me, uh, I said right away, um, Martin will be on this project, otherwise I cannot do it. Um, so yeah, so we want to talk about this type of collaboration about collaboration across softwares, uh, because we do use soft, different softwares. But this this uh, work as well as uh, project is quite interesting because, again, we're uh, six different artists. Uh, each one had his own uh, video and music. But there was also collaboration with the musicians and the song that we were given. Um, so that was very interesting. But before starting on the project, I want to give a shout out to the other artists uh, that did amazing uh, pieces. and. And I, I, Rick is here, and I think Rory as well, maybe. They're probably somewhere. Yeah, they're over there. Say hi to them as well. Um, and yeah, so the, um, the idea of collaboration even, even with different uh, projects is that we were all sharing like a Dropbox and, and Slack, and we could all see which, what everyone was doing. Um, so it was super inspiring to see everyone doing really great work, and you'd be like, oh my god, I need to be better. Um, so that was, <laughs> that was an interesting uh, uh, point of this. but. It was at the end, it was so great to see how everyone was doing uh, completely different styles and, and, and different looks. So what was our project and what was the idea? So, so the idea came from two things. Um, first, each song had an, like a interpretation with it so we could see what the music was supposed to kind of talk about. And, and then also we were listening to the music and that gave us a bit of the idea of what we wanted to do. So a, a, a little bit of what the, um, our, for the music that we got was uh, part genius is being in touch with the physical and in the divine in such a compelling way. So this talks a lot about uh, spirituality and and when we're thinking about this, we really wanted to create a creature, like a divine creature. Um, and at the time, uh, we were in between projects, both of us, and I had just finished doing a personal project. It was the one on the top with a pink background. And, and I thought of like repurposing that uh, for the matter of the time that we had. And so one of the ideas was kind of using these splines, and this is part of the mood board that I sent, and it was either having the splines kind of wrap around the shape, like you can see on the mood board on the head and the body, or actually have the splines itself being the creature. Um, so once we, we send this to Scott and to the agency and, and they like the, the approach, it was time to find the, the creature, right? Well, what would this divine creature be? Now, I knew kind of that I wanted to be kind of this kind of spline based creature and um, how we kind of flow. But but the look was we realized early on that it would be very influenced by the movement of the creature. So with that sense, we realized that maybe it was better to do some exploration first on motion and really feel how the movement would indicate the, the look and design of the creature. It was good to have like this, the, all of the base looks on the, what Nidia had established. And with that, I went out and tried a lot of different stuff. A lot of it ended up just looking like pasta, but uh, that's not the point here. Um, so we are trying to figure out like how would this creature articulate and how would it move through space in a way that's kind of interesting and also you need to be able to um, 
be working on a close-up level because we um, it um, yeah like it it should look interesting in some way. Uh, we even use motion capture in some early points just to be able to establish like a level of realism underneath it. So it was cool to try, but not really right for this particular one. So we kind of settled on this longer strings approach, and I think it was you that kind of told me that. Like, why don't you try something with wings, just like an angel or something similar to that? Uh, so we found this kind of nice sweeping motion, and this could work on like a, both a close-up level and also in a bigger scope that you might not be able to see the whole character at the same time, but it's still kind of more interesting. So this to speak had legs. So once we were happy with kind of how the movement was was going, it was time to go back uh, to the drawing board and finding the look. And so with that test that Martin did, um, I. I quickly put it up in Sinfuri, and I was trying to find these interesting shapes out of it and and, and forms. Uh, so at the time, I was I was going for more like a mood, like a dark mood, and a bit of like this gold uh, into it. And at the time we were, I was doing this, uh, we also started doing dynamatic to f really understand how the the movement and the story will flow with the music. So I'll show you now the animatic and the very the very first animatic, and as well is the chance to listen to the music, and, and you'll and then I'll explain a bit. Like um, we realized that we wanted to start first with uh, close up, so we wanted to make it a bit ambiguous and and, and abstract, and only more at, as the the music flow, we wanted the creature to really be the, like the hero shot. <laughs> So once the client and Scott were happy with it, uh, it was time to move on into really nailing the, the look and the style. Uh, one of the colors they, we got uh, from the agency uh, color palette, and one of the colors is the kind of the yellow and the salmon. So I went crazy bold with those colors. Um, and I got away from the gold because at least for me, it was very like Christianity, in, like in Portugal and all the stuff. We have a lot of gold in the churches, but we really wanted to appeal to any type of spirituality and religion. Um, so this was interesting, but it was too simple. So for some reason, I thought it needed a head. Uh, so I went into Sinofuri and I started to explore different shapes uh, that could uh, work into this creature. So then I applied it back um, and it was getting there. It felt a bit like jellyfish, but I like jellyfish, so I was fine with it. Uh, and. Um, and it was getting there, and at the time I was already pushing a bit more into the material look, the shading. Uh, but I realized as well because our animatic had a lot of close-ups, so it felt like the splines itself needed more than just being that interesting material. So I just gathered some assets um, uh, that I had, um, and and then I just kind of uh, because this spiritual thing kind of for me comes a lot from nature. So I thought that this would go well with the creature. So then it was time to apply them into the creature. Uh, so at this point I was happy with the amount of detail. Uh, that it was there, but I, I was hating the colors. And, and mainly because the yellow was taking too much uh, focus, the background was taking too much focus from the, um, the creature itself. So I turned it back um, and pushed the yellow into the, um, the actual the creature. And, and these are some of the steels that we, de we developed for print. And the, the interesting thing about this project was that the, the print stage on the steels came really early on, and usually we would do motion, and then at the end we'll choose some of them. So these steels actually come from that initial test that Martin did with the wings, and then I just literally on Cine 40 just found like interesting, um, di interesting shapes, and I just kind of rotated the head around to make it look like he was moving. Um, so yeah, so it was very interesting that we had to push really um, for like right at the beginning of the project into the stills while we're still actually figuring out how the the character will really look and move. Yeah, it's kind of funny. Like we, yeah, like you said, we still haven't really figured out what this creature was, but we kind of had the idea of it from the from the boardomatic then. So now it's time to make like a proper rig for it and kind of trying to apply the things that we saw from the from the automatic and make a proper setup. So we had added, incorporated the head, we added in a tail that had more like clumpy um, kind of attributes on top of it. And also we added more resolution into the splines themselves because we saw how close up we needed to, to go to it. And um, so with that said, we the animation part of this project was also a bit different because we 
didn't really know the shots. So a way to set it up was to have uh, more kind of simplified um, loops of animation, like 40 30 seconds. And um, with those things that we can then cache it out and place different cameras around it and kind of looking for interesting angles around this. And I think it gave us a lot of opportunities to find things that we would probably normally have not found otherwise. And um, with that kind of done, it was time to export out and get it over to cinema. So getting the, the splines from the setup over and into as Alembic. And all of this is to say that software is just a tool, right? It doesn't really matter the, how you, you're working with it. It's more about the end result. And working with something that you're comfortable with would probably mean that you're more likely to get better at it in the longer term. Yeah, so for us, there was never a, a moment where I tried to convert him to Sino 4D or he tried to convert me to Maya. And pretty much what we decided is just we used the best of, we know of the softwares and then we just created a workflow uh, that worked for us. And this is in Sino 4D with the, his splines and his deformation on the head. And then I just added the rest of the elements. So early on, I spoke about the prints and I just want to kind of show uh, quickly how they were used afterwards. So they were used in the booklets and also some flyers that we found here in Melbourne, so we were very happy to see it. Uh, and as well, they're using posters, so each one of us got posters. And we actually uh, saw one from Scott uh, in Sydney, and, and it was really nice to actually go back. And you're so used to doing things for online, Instagram and web, and actually walking around and as we were visiting um, Sydney and, and Melbourne to actually see these things uh, around, so that was great. So now is, here is the actual final video, and we hope you enjoy it. So last but not least, the future. So what's up next for us and what type of collaboration? So we love collaborating with each other, obviously. That for me is great because he does the, the work and I just take the credits. Um, but, but no, really, we, we love working with a lot of different artists and studios and agency. And it's something that we really want to continue working in, in the future. Yeah, like here's just, uh, here's just a few things that we've been noodling with in the last couple of years here. and. Uh, it's just fun to explore different styles and different way of approaching like uh, live action or like character animation, uh, some live installations as well happening recently. And yeah, like she said, we just want to try to reach out to more talented people around the globe and do more work. Just have fun. Yeah. So thanks everyone. And um, if you have any questions, let us know. Yeah, thank you. All right. uh, beautiful and amazing. Thank you very much. Is you and you. And also want to give them a big thanks for flying from the other side of the world. And um, of course, thanks to our sponsors for allowing that to happen. So thanks for being here, guys. Thank you.